Sam Altman is on a path to take over the world. Guys, from all the people that I have studied in the past and seeing how they rose to the top, right? The people who have been at the top of their field, who have been the most powerful people in all of history, right? Whether it's the Medici family or the Rockefellers or, you know, all these big family dynasties, you know, Steve Jobs, Zuckerberg, Vladimir Putin, Napoleon, Alexander the Great, all these guys who really dominated society. One thing that I found that was a common thread with all of them is that they got in the right place at the right time. And I believe a lot of people understate the power of being in the right place at the right time. It actually, it's not everything, but it is a lot of it. A lot of the reason for the people who are at the top right? Zuckerberg was, you know, at the perfect age, at the perfect time in history to create a social media platform. And he had competitors, but he made it out on top, right? Because he got in early, right? Jeff Bezos succeeded with Amazon because he got in early. He saw a trend and he caught the trend. And right now, the big trend is AI. Um, AI powered software for different industries, um, there's, there's a lot of big startups coming into play right now. A lot of money getting dumped into AI and who is at the top of everything right now? Open AI, you know, Google as well. Google is also the dominant player, um, because they have so much money and they have, you know, a large portion of the talent in the field of artificial intelligence, but it's growing, right? The, the field as a whole is growing. And OpenAI, ChatGPT are clearly at the top of the game right now, right? When people think about AI, they think about ChatGPT right, right away. So they've already created that brand recognition. They've already become a pervasive company in our society, right? I, I forgot the statistics, but they were by far the fastest growing company, by far, with the most users. Um, not Facebook didn't even come close, no other company even came close to them. And uh, all these AI startups are popping up left and right, left and right. And all of us who don't catch this trend are going to be left behind. And I've really been thinking about, you know, what, um, what I want to start, you know, the kind of business I want to start. I know um, I'm destined to be an entrepreneur. And, um, you know, I've been doing what I can here and there playing a small game, um, but I want to play a bigger game and I don't want to miss this opportunity because, you know, very soon this opportunity is going to be gone, All right? This is like the early days of the internet where venture capitalists are dumping, dumping money. I mean, I see a new post every day of a startup getting, you know, raising $18 million dollars. $36 million, you know, that new startup, Harvey AI, for the legal industry, kind of like your um, all-in-one legal AI solution to help you with many tasks um, in the legal process from intake to, you know, documents, document automat automation, all this kind of stuff. And uh, they have $100 million invested in it. And guess who is at the top of that, right? OpenAI. They're, they own a share in the company. So from what I can see, the current landscape looks like we're going to have to get in this game now if we want to get ahead. You and me. You and me who want to do great things, who want to be successful, who uh, really want to change this world for the better um, the guys who get in early win. They win. And the rest of us, you know, I think quality of life is going to go up, but it's going to be a, um, an existence where there's a few people at the top dominating and we are uh, like slaves in a sense. So my thoughts are I'm getting in this space now. And I'm not going to wait any longer. And I don't care what anyone says. I'm going to create something. 
And, um, you know, I've been really in depth in the legal industry. Uh, I think that is going to be my first market that I tackle uh, for my 20s. I've decided for this next decade, uh, I'm going to commit to the legal industry. I'm 21. And uh, by the time I'm 30, I'm going to have done great things in this industry and then move on to the next, right? I've given myself a long enough time horizon. Um, I'm definitely going to stick to one industry because once you know an industry and you have such deep knowledge in it and that's accumulated after months, years, you really uh, can do great things. You really understand the problems and what problems need to be solved. And a lot of the problems that need to be solved um, will involve AI, um, AI solutions to uh, help with every part of the legal process. And sure, there's going to be ethical issues in terms of litigation with AI. There's already been some problems of people using ChatGPT and uh, it going bad. I think that the models are going to get a lot more powerful over time, a lot more powerful. We haven't seen anything yet. The rate of growth of AI, the rate of progress is just unbelievable. Um, I was talking to a gentleman today. I love having these conversations. And uh, he's told me, uh, and he's quite a bit older than me, and he told me that he's been getting a lot of opportunities to invest in AI startups. He's, he's pretty successful. And uh, he said what he's seen is that there is a lot of um, smoke right now. It's a lot of fluff. There's a lot of money getting dumped into businesses, but a lot of people are forgetting that uh, business is, um, is a science. And we can't just say that we're creating this next big AI startup without having the fundamentals of business in place as well, because it's a business at the end of the day, right? It doesn't matter. Um, how powerful your AI is. You've got to have the right systems and processes in place. And uh, that was something that I uh, really needed to hear today because I uh, have been drinking the Kool-Aid, you might say, getting all excited, getting all excited about AI and the possibilities with it and the things that you know you can create, like creating an AI sales rep, right? That's more persuasive than a top closer at a company, right? Like that, that is powerful. That is powerful. But you also got to remember that, you know, there's a lot of ethical things to consider here. There's a lot of things you need to consider and you also need to consider how you're actually going to build the business. What's the model of the business, right? You, you can't just say, oh, I have this great idea and then have no fundamentals behind it, right? Um, and that was just something that I needed to hear today because I think this is going to be like early internet where there's a lot of hype and then there's going to be a bubble and then it's going to burst. And I think that's happening all over again. It's like the early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s, all over again. A lot of hype, a lot of hype and everyone's jumping on it. So your ability to differentiate, to differentiate yourself and be creative uh, is hard, especially if you don't live in Silicon Valley. I mean, that's, uh, that's a huge advantage right there, being in the environment. I'm probably in one of the next best, best cities. I'm in Boston, You've got MIT right across the river and Harvard. Uh, so I am strategically placed. And going back to kind of uh, the opportunity right now and the people in history and how they got to the top, they seized the opportunity at the right time. They were in the right place at the right time and they jumped on it. And they jumped on it. They didn't let it go to waste. And that's that's how I feel right now. I can't let this opportunity go to waste because if so, I'm going to regret it for the rest of my life. And that's why I've given myself permission to wander, permission to be curious because if I didn't, if I didn't give myself that permission, I would have never landed here. And I'm certain of that, certain of that. So that's my thoughts, guys. Uh, Sam Altman is um, already a very powerful man and he's gonna continue to get more powerful. Um, I think he's, uh, he's gonna be in a position like Elon where he just has so much money and power and you know, it's dangerous. 
it's dangerous for a lot of power to be in one man's hands. So uh, we need to do what we can to compete, compete with that, to not let that happen, right? And he even said in an interview recently, the, the reporter asked him, why should we trust you? And I actually really liked his answer. He, he didn't try and justify, you know, why we should trust him. He just said, you shouldn't trust me. You shouldn't trust any one person with a technology so powerful. And I love that honesty from him, honestly. He's, uh, he's playing chess right now. I, he has to be very careful. Um, keep your eye on him, just like I am. Um, watch all these moves that they're gonna be making at OpenAI, at Google. Um, and uh, yeah, guys, let's jump on this opportunity. We are prime and ready to go. 21 years old, just turned 21. And uh, I feel more excited than ever to uh, not only, you know, make a boatload of money, right? I wanna be successful financially. I'm not hiding that from anyone, but I wanna change the world. That really is my motivation more than anything else. I wanna change the world for the better. That's why I look up to people like Steve Jobs, right? Um, Steve Jobs fundamentally changed, you know, how we interact with technology. And uh, that that is something, right? One common thread that I see with everyone that I meet, everyone that I hang around, they all have an iPhone, they all have Apple products. So create something that pervasive in society, that impactful, that, that's a goal of mine in my life. So yeah, guys, I'm really grateful for you watching this video. I hope you uh, stuck around with me to hear my thoughts on this next revolution, where this world is going. And I don't know when you're watching this, this might be in a few years from now. Um, I don't know where I'm gonna be, but I know I'm gonna be in a position where a lot of people are coming back to watch these videos. And um, I just want you to know, guys, that you have to, you have to give yourself permission. You just have to, you can't be so rigid with yourself. Permission to wander, like I said in my last video about Bezos. Without allowing yourself to wander, you never land on the opportunity. You're not searching for anything. You're siloed, you're, you're, you're going down one path. And what a sad life that is. To be unidimensional and never learn about all the beautiful things that are happening in this world and to miss an opportunity like this. I have some other op ideas as well that I don't see people acting on fast enough. So um, be curious, look around, look around for all of uh, the opportunities out there and seize them. This world is yours, guys. It really is. Um, it's yours for the taking. It's ours for the taking. And uh, I look forward to seeing where, uh, where we go from here. This is Blaze the Cyan signing off. I'm super grateful for you all, and I'll see you in the next video.